fungi on the frontier between France and Franco-Spain, tension increases as the French government votes to close the border between the two nations. The international bridge over the Vidasoa River is the scene of urgent last-minute comings and goings before the barrier is brought down. France made the move in protest against the activities of the Franco government, born with the help of Hitler and Mussolini, for which Franco paid with aid to the Axis throughout the war. The last to be allowed across by the French guards hurry to the Spanish side of the bridge as the barrier closes off traffic between the two countries. The border is closed. France, England, and the United States have called upon the Spanish people to oust Franco by peaceable means, promising interim aid and protection in the free, unfettered election of a new government and the restoration of democratic processes in Spain. The President of the United States is hailed by members of the Federal Council of the Churches of Christ in America. Before 500 religious leaders, President Truman stressed the world's need for religious tolerance and unity. In a very serious vein, to the applause of the leaders of 27 million Protestants, the President refers to the United Nations Charter. We have tried to write into the Charter of the United Nations the essence of religion. The United States expects to support that Charter. It expects to defend that charter. It expects to expand and perfect that charter. And we are confident that all the other United Nations expect to do the same. Great Lakes area of the United States is the victim of ice flows from Lake Huron, which are pushed inshore by roaring winds near the town of Bay City, Michigan. Fifty-five houses are crushed by the relentless ice, which piles up in some places to a height of 40 feet and moves inland at the rate of a foot a minute. As the huge chunks of moving ice menace the area, a grinding, rumbling sound awakened and warned the inhabitants, giving them time to escape. Although property damage was high, there were no human casualties in this unusual freak of nature. Through unusually deep snow in Washington state, droves of deer, unable to graze and desperate for food, turned to their human friends. The State Game Commission provided truckloads of hay and other fodder to keep the deer alive through the heavy winter weather. Spry and frisky after their dinner, the wild animals return to the woods, their survival assured after the heaviest snowfall in this area in 20 years. A 35-ton American Sherman tank holds no terror for these men, but the decoy armor fooled the German air reconnaissance during the war. Filled with nothing but air, a dummy turret, which on a real tank would weigh several tons, comes off with ease. And here's a five-ton truck that can be overturned by the flick of a man's hand. It took only ingenuity, rubber, and a little compressed air to provide a field full of bogus vehicles for Hitler's airmen to waste time and ammunition on. In the space of four minutes, a new tank or truck could be inflated. ever see a tank walking? Well, it's easy if you pick the right tank. At Clovis Field, New Mexico, newsmen are on hand to see the Army's first radio-controlled four-engine airplane to be used in photographing the atom bomb tests at Bikini Atoll in the Pacific in May and July. The newsreel cameraman will be the only man aboard in this test, made with an old flying fortress bomber. No pilot, 
no co-pilot, no crew for this plane. The takeoff is directed by the operator on the ground. Once in the air, control is switched from the ground to a mothership, which regulates its every movement. This is the mothership. And this is the pilotless plane. Four such radio-directed planes will fly over Bikini Atoll in connection with America's atomic bomb experiments against obsolete and enemy naval vessels. And here is Bikini, nearly 4,000 miles from the United States, a tiny coral atoll destined for atomic bomb experiments. Here, a long way from the heavily populated areas of the world, the Army and Navy will put the atom bomb through a laboratory test. Here, a whole fleet of iron ships will undergo the attack, observed by scores of military men and men of science. The people of Bikini are to be moved elsewhere. These first pictures of the little island show the 165 men, women, and children as they prepare for the move to another small island, a safe distance away. Navy ships and planes are already in service off Bikini, preparing anchorages for the ships. In front of the palm-thatched community house, an American naval officer, through an interpreter, discusses plans for moving the people. The Navy is transporting the entire population to Ronjerick Atoll and paying a fair price for property that can't be taken along. The people of Bikini are a happy people, and they chat gaily with the Americans as they wait to leave. Modern dentistry brings only laughter. An advanced construction party of native men and Navy engineers moves from the little island to build homes for the entire community on the new island. The women and children wave them a happy farewell as they look forward to their own ocean voyage and their new homes. High-flying action at Iron Mountain, Michigan in the Central United States Ski Association Tournament. Top flight skiers take wing off the world's highest artificial ski slide. A few are a little off as to timing and come to grief on the icy slope. Competition is keen as the jumpers soar for distance. The best jump of the day. Walter Batila wins the title with a spectacular leap of 253 feet. Now here's one fellow who doesn't make it. He's headed for trouble. 